Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today we're going to read some fascinating Quo channelings talking about harvest, the transition from third to fourth density as it happened on Venus, and the lessons we can learn from their experience, as well as other interesting issues like extraterrestrial influence and free will. As I always explain, Quo is a group of higher density beings channeled through LL research that answer questions of a spiritual nature. I find a lot of what they teach to be fascinating. We've gone over many different teachings and learned quite a bit so far. I may not read many more Quo channelings, maybe not on a weekly basis. We will see if new channelings come in or other information partially because I've read so many and I don't want to end up repeating myself on accident. And I think we've covered the full range of what Quo has taught so far. But I found these in particular to be uniquely interesting, answering questions about what happened on Venus. They had moved through third density and moved into fourth density. And I think great lessons can be learned from someone who's experienced what we're going through. They're movement from third to fourth density was different and in many ways that particular civilization regretted not being in a thicker third density environment like we are because they've had to revisit some of the lessons that they had learned in third density over again once they reached sixth density we begin with the channeling delivered on may 28 2006 question from a You've mentioned before that the harvest of this particular sub-logos, planet Earth, is not typical. You've said that other sub-logi have had considerably less difficulty at their times of harvest. Would you consider our sub-logos use of combined free will together with strong veiling to be an inefficient combination? And can you compare that to the harvest of third density on Venus? Both Mars and Maldek had warlike societies, and we were wondering what the third density was like on Venus, and what major factors and catalysts went into their societies to bring them to a service to others' choice. They must have done something right, so could Quo speak to the harvest that is now happening on planet Earth, and perhaps contrast it with the harvests on Mars, Maldek, and Venus? We are the principle known to you. As the quo greetings in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator it is our privilege and our pleasure to serve the creator by offering ourselves to groups such as this one which may have an interest in material such as is channeled by this instrument it is a great privilege to be called to your circle of seeking and we thank each of those who have taken the time and the space out of their very busy daily round of activities in order to create a sacred space in which to seek the truth. As always, we would ask of each the care with the discrimination in listening to what we have to say. We may not hit the mark for you. If our thoughts do not resonate to you, please lay them aside without a second thought. We would not wish to be a stumbling block in your way. Sometimes if the wrong thought is held in stubbornness, when resonance is not there, it can do no harm. So we would appreciate your being very careful about those thoughts that you allow past the gates of your perception. Your query this day is about the difference between various planetary entities take on third density and what was done differently on the planet you call Venus that allowed that planet to have a more harmonious and far more successful journey through the third density. The one known as A asked whether the combination of very clear and starkly delineated free will and the fairly profound veiling that is apparent on Earth's third density, or the density of choice, was a combination that spelled a difficult and challenging third density for those of planet Earth. And we would agree with this assessment of factors involved in the creation of a somewhat challenging density of choice for planet Earth, especially in regards to comparing it to the density of choice on the planetary energy called Venus. For indeed, in that third density environment, there was less of a heaviness involved in the veiling. The free will was as marked as is the factor of free will upon your planet. However, there was for the entities of Venus a transparency in the veil, 
which was transparent enough to allow processes which you know as envisioning, journeying, and dreaming to have a more robust life within the conscious processes, as well as the subconscious processes of the entities in third density upon the planetary influence you call Venus. This is in fact the one difference between the third density of the planet known as Venus and the other planetary influences of which you are aware. The problem with the somewhat transparent veiling process upon third density is that the choice is not made in an atmosphere of boot camp. Therefore, when the third density entity becomes a fourth density entity, and then a fifth density entity, the energies move along with utmost smoothness until fifth density, at which time the lack of challenge in penetrating the veiling process shows up as a dynamic that is negative with respect to being able to work well with the opening of those energies of wisdom which seem dark to the naive and unsophisticated seeker. Consequently, the work and challenge came for those entities experiencing the higher densities on Venus, influence instead of in third density. Those who graduated into sixth density from the influence of the planet known as Venus, then have often in coming back into third density on your planet to serve as wanderers, been faced with a very challenging self-given agenda of learning. That agenda is in rebalancing love and wisdom in order to value them in such a way that they are able to interpenetrate each other in true sixth density unity. The benefit of the more impenetrable veil is that it creates for the third density entity attempting to choose between service to self and service to others a stark and seemingly profound experience of suffering which this instrument would call Golgotha. The third density of your planet calls forth from the seeking entity a purity of humility and surrender that is, in our humble opinion, a far more favorable plinth upon which to build the character that will move through all the densities of your octave than the third density where there is always seen the benefit of teachers and the benefit of taking another entity's word for something. Third density with a lighter veil creates a wonderful place for entities to put themselves in the teaching situation and the system of guru and chela as known among your Buddhist is very similar to the kind of enjoyment that third density upon Venus created. However, it was found in this early third density experience that indeed there were difficulties in higher density work that were engendered by the seemingly quick and easy move through third density. What this has to offer to those asking this question is our assurance that those within Earth's third density at this time have received a powerful gift. In receiving such a difficult and challenging third density atmosphere, you have faced those shadows that await you, if not in third density, then in more subtle work in higher densities where those shadows are more difficult to deal with. Your present environment is a powerful environment. Powerful, that is, just as a loaded gun is powerful. The question is, where do you wish to aim this experience when you pull the trigger on tomorrow? Where would you like to be headed? Because the choice of heading is indeed yours. You are in a position, each of you my friends, to make powerful and life-changing choices this day and every day because you must deal in faith alone. When you do choose to move in faith, the planet moves with you. You take the power of your being and focus it upon your intention. And that which you choose is chosen. We cannot express to you the power that you have over your destiny. We cannot express it, nor can anyone, because that which you choose must be chosen in faith alone. What we can say to you, my friends, is that there is ample companionship for you. It is unseen, but it does not have to be unfelt. Ask for your guidance to be with you in these difficult days and in these difficult moments, for each of you has particularly difficult moments, either at this time or in the near future. That is the nature of these times, my friends. That is the nature of these somewhat inconvenient times. Nevertheless, they are times extremely fertile and rich in learning and in service. 
Please do not be concerned that you shall be responsible for some learning or for some service, for all has been, is, and will be attracted to you as you are ready to express it. Therefore, allow the Spirit to move through you when you feel that it is your time to speak, your time to envision, your time to pray, or your time to heal. For when you sense the resonance of that moment and act upon it, all of the heavenly world support you, my friends. Is there a follow-up to that query at this time? Jim says, we have another question. The question is, as a practicing Reiki master teacher, I'm interested in what Quo has to offer about Reiki energy. Specifically, I'd like to know what can be shared about the nature of the physical and spiritual characteristics of this energy that in my experience can bring about profound improvements. What are the mechanisms by which Reiki energy can heal? How are the physical cells in the body affected by Reiki energy? Is it necessary for the recipient to believe in and accept the Reiki energy for healing to occur? What's the source of Reiki energy? Is Reiki energy protected or guided by higher spiritual beings? We are those of Quo and are aware of your query. We would ask the one known as Jim, after we have responded through this instrument, to review the questions upon the subject and re-ask any which we do not touch upon in the first response. We thank the one known as Jim for this aid. We are not aware because this instrument is not aware of the roots of the meaning of Reiki. We do not know this word as such. However, we examine the physical vehicle of this instrument which has experienced a great deal of Reiki energy given through various practitioners and masters of that art. There are indeed some strictures upon what we can say concerning this energy. However, we may touch upon some of the queries that were asked. We would say that this energy is the energy of the one infinite creator which is modified by its travel through the chakra system or the electrical body of the practitioner who is offering healing. It is not at all an energy which comes from the practitioner. However, it is helpful when thinking about offering Reiki energy to think about the concept which we have suggested through this instrument before in other applications of the being or soul as a crystal. Each of you, both in the physical body and in the electrical body, has some of the characteristics of a crystal. Physically, in your watery body, you contain a great deal of that crystal substance known as water. And therefore, your entire body may be easily tuned and magnetized to whatever vibration you wish to tune to. This instrument carefully tunes its physical body as well as its energy body before each session of channeling by singing hymns, offering prayers, and protecting the self by various means, calling the archangels and focusing down into a more focused state within the physical body, the emotional body, and so forth. So does each entity have this ability to focus the energies of the physical body as if the body were a crystal and it could be tuned. And when the physical body is well tuned, it then may choose what kind of energy it will pick up. It chooses the radio station that it wishes to play, let us say. For a channel such as this one, the radio station is us. The channeler tunes the body, tunes the spirit, prepares itself, and then calls for the highest and best radio station in its capacity to receive. We show up. The instrument offers its faculties to us, and we speak through the instrument. For a healer, it's a slightly different contact, but it is the same kind of result. The practitioner tunes itself by aligning itself to open up its truest, deepest, and most honest self. It tunes to its own highest and best self. This is one of those areas into which we cannot probe because of the fact that Reiki teaching is of a certain type and we would not wish to infringe upon the teaching of this particular kind of energy work. Nevertheless, there is tuning involved, and it is a freeing kind of tuning where much of the self is dropped away that is irrelevant to the essential or core self, and that core self is freed from its normal strictures and allowed to become the dominant part of the mind-body-spirit. This tuned being, then, is crystal, is now ready to carry energy. The energy that it receives comes into the crystal self as the entire spectrum of energies of the one infinite creator. This power source is infinite and the amount of energy that may be given at any given time is also infinite. The creator is endlessly generous. Now the nature of the activity within the crystal before the energy flows through the hands and from the body of the practitioner and into the energy system and the body of the patient, shall we say, is most closely approximated by a discussion in brief of the act of Holy Eucharist or Holy Communion. 
and that rite of worship in the Christian church, the body and the blood of the one known as Jesus the Christ, is called into being either in literal or in symbolic form, and then is drunk by the communicant who receives the strength and the energy of Christ's consciousness. In the Reiki energy exchange, infinite love comes into the physical and electrical body system of the practitioner of Reiki. That practitioner breaks itself open, blesses its unique vibrational characteristics, and offers them to the energy that is coming through. The energy that is coming through is then particularized and colored by the crystalline properties of the Reiki master. And the Reiki master blesses the resulting energy that is moving through it and releases it in its altered form to flow into the energy system of the patient. Thereby, an impersonal universal energy has been particularized and personalized by the genuine love and the open-hearted compassion of the practitioner. This is not done in any intellectual way. In fact, when intellect is applied to this art, it falls apart. It must be done from direct feeling. That is the way the heart thinks. The heart knows and then immediately it produces that which in thinking would be a process. May we ask the one known as Jim to repeat the portions of the query about Reiki upon which we have not touched. Here are those of the quote. How are the physical cells of the body affected by the Reiki energies? And is it necessary for the recipient to believe in Reiki energy? Where are those of the quo and are aware of your query? The energies of Reiki move through each cell and their information is coded so that each cell may pick up the energy involved. Let us be clear in stating there is no push or pull to Reiki energy. It is not something that is given. It is rather an environment that is created. For the time that the Reiki work is being done, the patient lies in an increasingly Edenic environment. The distortions that create illness are suspended. The crystalline nature of the energy pouring through creates an alternative environment, and if the person chooses to accept the new environment, healing may occur. If the person chooses not to accept the healing environment, then it is as if it never occurred. No harm has been done, but also no healing will have occurred. It is not at all necessary for an entity who is being healed to believe that anything is occurring. However, it is necessary for the entity to accept the new configuration of energy. Some entities are completely able to do this without believing at all in the entire exercise. They are able to say, given that such a thing occurred, then I accept the healing. It is not belief that is necessary, but the willingness to accept a new environment that is required. We are those of Quo and would ask if there is another query. Jim asks, we have a series of questions about names and various entities. What can you tell us about the original Yahweh, now a name? Is it a social memory complex? If so, what density did Jesus come from? We are those of Quo and are aware of your query. The entity known as Yahweh is an inner planes entity as opposed to an extraterrestrial entity. It is an essence native to this particular sun system which has been involved in the guardianship of the earth sphere for thousands of your millennia. It is a combination of energies which are male and female, rather than creating a hermaphroditic entity. However, this entity holds the energies of male and female in a sacred dynamic. One might as well call such as entity Adam and Eve, but it is both Adam and Eve. It is not in any way, shape, or form that which has been incarnate, but rather it is of the angelic realm. It is ironic in the extreme we feel that is this entity which is responsible for creating conditions under which the male aspect of the species has become so unbalanced in its dominancy over the female aspect of deity, which in the original Yahweh energy was in perfect balance. May we ask if there is a follow-up? Jim says, Ra refers to this entity unnamed as Yohe Shin Vauhe, and its meaning is as he comes. Can you explain the abundance of names and non-names? And Finally, Arcturus also means he comes and is an Egyptian name, is the positive Yahweh from Arcturus. We are those of Quo and are aware of your query, my brother. The entity Yahweh is not from Arcturus, but rather, as all angelic entities are, it is part of the energy involved in your sun body. However, this entity has been involved with Earth, as we have said, for a great deal of your time. The naming of entities and its seeming confusion is due to the fact that in both lower and higher densities, Naming does not necessarily occur. It is not necessary for each thing has a unique vibration. Your vibration is a much more eloquent signature of your character than a name that has been given to you by someone who is not aware of the sacred nuances of your character. 
The attempt to name essences and energies is generally done because there is a third density being involved who feels more comfortable and more in control knowing the name of an entity and not just how that entity feels. The energies involved in Yahweh become aware that the work that they had done in creating an enhanced DNA signature for the human species had not had the results which had been hoped for. That entity moved into a time and space of deep and devotional meditation and prayer, asking how it could begin to make amends for the mistakes that it had made. The addition of Shin to yad heh vau -Heh was chosen by Yahweh in order to adjust the vibrational nuances of its name in order to indicate Christ, consciousness. It is as if Adam and Eve changed its name to Emmanuel. There was a move from the feeling of the Old Testament to the feeling of the New Testament. That was a move from worth by being chosen people to worth by a certain level of consciousness, which was love. This was indeed for this entity a valuable adjustment and one which has reflected down for the heaven worlds into the earth world as that environment into which the one known as Jesus the Christ came. Is there a follow-up to this query? Question inaudible. We are those of Quo and are aware of your query, my brother, and may we say parenthetically what a joy it is to be in touch with you and with all who visit this group from a non-local location. It is a treat to us indeed to work with this non-local group and the enhanced energies that it offers for communication and for fellowship. Anything that affects the physical body will have a rippling effect upon the non-physical or form making or electrical or chakra body. However, it is impossible for us to pinpoint how physical effects ripple over into the non-physical electrical body. It is completely the product of how each person's chakra body is wired. Each entity is wired in a unique way. We do not mean that simply some entities have stronger red ray than orange ray or stronger orange ray than yellow ray or so forth. It is not only that to consider, there is also to consider how the chakras are wired within themselves and between themselves. The complexity of this and the many, many different ways that people do set up their energy flow make it impossible for us to discuss how diet and exercise and so forth would affect the energy body. What affects the energy body most is the thoughts that one has. Therefore, if one is improving one's diet and is happy about it, the information of the improved diet moves into the chakra body as good news. If, on the other hand, an entity is plodding through a dietary regimen that is prescribed for an illness, but that entity is unhappy and feels constricted by this regimen, then the information that is given to the chakra body will be quite different. It will seem like a negative thing to the chakra body rather than a positive thing for the chakra body is not listening to the doctor nor is it listening to ideas that contain the word should. It is only listening to the feelings and the thought forms involved in the translation of physical effects into the feelings and sensations of the body. A happy heart is more helpful to the chakra system than a good diet. A peaceful mind is more helpful to the chakra system than exercise. There are times when it is wise to follow the needs of the electrical body and the chakra system rather than the needs of the physical body. We encourage all of those who must guard their health by means of diet, exercise, and other regimens of this kind never to let duty press out the joy from life. No matter how essential it is, the right things are eaten and the right things are avoided in a diet or how important various exercises are in looking at the health of the entire organism, the faculty of joy is primary. Find a way, if you must, follow a regimen to inject joy into it. And then even the bitterest herbs, even the most stringent of diets, even the most aggravating of exercise routines will be part of that which makes you joyful, peaceful, and strong. No matter how essential it is that you take care of your health, remember always that your health begins with thanksgiving, praise, joy, and the open heart that embraces the Creator, the Self, and all the other selves as one beautiful, perfect, interrelated pattern of love and light. Question, how may we increase the positive polarization of our connection? We are those of the Quo and are aware of your query. The key to increasing positive polarization with the Earth is to realize that the Earth is already positively polarized. You are not attempting to do anything to the Earth when you attempt to polarize positively with regard to it. You are joining it in its dance. The Earth is dancing a dance of love and joy. Every flower and tree waves in harmony and ecstasy, dancing perfectly with all of the other elements of creation surrounding it. 
We feel that many of you have had experiences where you tapped into this dance, the song of nature, the wonderful jig of creation. Some of you have seen the mountains clap their hands, and the seas and the oceans leap for joy. Enter into the joy of the dance of earth. It is already ongoing. You have only to cast aside every doubt and every thought that would keep you from being purely an elemental part of creation and join in its dance. Many have attempted to make this complicated thing. It is not at all complex. It is a matter of shedding complexity and embracing what is. We find this instrument's energy is beginning to wane thusly. We would ask for a follow-up to this question or for one final query at this time. Question, is a non-local group better than a local group? We are those of Quo and are aware of your query, my brother. We would not use the word better, as in saying that a non-local group is better than a local group. We would say that there is a difference. In a local group, there is certain level or grade of energy which is possible for that group. It is that which is created by the members sitting in the circle plus their unseen friends, their guidance system, angels that are with them, the rest of the social memory complex that overshadows wanderers and so forth. When you create a non-local group, it is as if you've raised the energy or the plane of the group by one level. It is as if a flat circle has become a sphere. The non-locality of the group creates a more complex and intricate family system that is backing up the entities that are sitting in the group. Further, the fact that you are not local means there is a global aspect to the group that is not obvious to the group when it is a local group. That is, a local group represents the planet, just as a non-local group represents all of humankind. However, it is not self-perceived as a group that represents all of humankind. Whereas in the perceptive web of each of those attending this session, there is a self-awareness that they are part of a planet-wide circle of seeking that is seeking to know the truth. This activates an enormous amount of energy on the inner planes of your planet, and indeed in the surrounding families of those who serve to guide or offer angelic assistance to the members of the group. Consequently, it is a larger entity. It is an entity of a different level or quantum, and that difference is such that we are far more able to surf on the energy of the group in working with this instrument. So there is that aspect of a smoother and more universal channel which is opened through this particular instrument. So as you can see, there are differences between a local group and a non-local group that cannot be accounted for by simply the numbers being greater in a non-local group. We move to a channeling delivered on March 15th, 2008. Our question this evening has to do with how extraterrestrial contacts with human beings on planet Earth in third density may or may not infringe upon the free will of the entities contacted. We are wondering about the philosophy that the extraterrestrial entities use in order to decide whether or not to make contact and what kind of contact to make. For example, during the Manhattan Project, information from positive extraterrestrial sources was given concerning nuclear energy that's very specific. There have been other contacts, such as Billy Myers' contact and the contact with Phyllis Schlemmer from The Nine and Tom, which have had more or less specific information to give. We are wondering if this infringes on the free will of the humans who are contacted and what exactly is the philosophy of the extraterrestrials when they make contact with regard to specific information and the infringement on free will. We are known to you as the principle of Quo. Greetings, my friends, in the love and light of the one infinite creator. It is our privilege and pleasure to be with you this evening to share in your vibrations and to respond to your query concerning the infringement of free will by those of extraterrestrial origin who have been speaking to your people, and in some cases meeting them face to face. You asked this evening concerning the nature of contact betwixt extraterrestrial entities and earth entities. You asked about free will and how extraterrestrial entities feel about the free will of those upon planet Earth. We may start with ourselves. We of the Confederation of Planets in service to the One Infinite Creator have, shall we say, experimented with contact in terms of face-to-face -face contact in your far distant past. We found that the direct communication face-to-face -face was neither positive nor negative, but only that which the entities of that time felt was part of the natural universe at that time was replete with many gods and many unusual things. What caused us to become more and more aware of the difficulties of clean communication with those of planet Earth was the inability of even the most powerful entity to maintain the purity of the initial contact, 
once the information we gave had resulted in the pyramids that were built. Instead of the pyramids being used for the purpose for which they were built, they became used for the purpose of the few, the elite, the powerful, and the wealthy. We became aware of the impossibility of blending physical presence with a lack of distortion. We, those of the raw group, those of the Hatan group, and those of the Latui group, chose not to use again any means except the channeling through instruments, such as this one, as a way of communication of concepts, hopefully helpful to the spiritual evolution of those on planet Earth, to the population at large. We are not the only entities from elsewhere which are interested in planet Earth at this time. There are many entities interested in your planet that come from elsewhere. Some of these entities are of the Confederation and have agreed with those of us who've had a relationship with those on planet Earth previously, so that in the interest of retaining positive polarity, we have chosen not to appear to your people. We believe that we are at the apex of that which we can do and remain clear of the possibility of infringement. However, we say in all humility that we are not absolutely sure that if we speak at all, we're not in some way infringing on the free will of those who may hear our words and be persuaded again their preferences of the truth of that which we have to offer. It does not stop us from speaking, but this concern is enough to create in us the desire to mention the request to each who hears or listens to our words to be very responsible and to discriminate so that none of our words are taken on faith or simply because we say them. The reason for this mention at every contact is this concern on our parts. The only way that we could avoid any possibility of an infringement on free will of those on planet Earth is to stop speaking through instruments such as this one. Yet the cry goes out from Earth. Many, many millions of you are seeking the truth. Therefore, we come in answer to a call and do not feel that we can turn away from the depth and profundity of this call at this time. It heartens us to see your planet waking up, metaphysically speaking. We comfort ourselves that surely we could not have done too much damage. For the message is getting out. More and more people have become aware that they are one with their neighbors. More and more people are aware now that love is the only answer. The energy of this planet is exponentially readier for fourth density graduation than it was when we began working with this channel 30 years ago. There are many other kinds of entities who seek to speak with the people of planet Earth or who to seek to influence their decisions. The so-called Orion Empire is a kind of confederation of those who are negatively polarized and who are responding to the call of those who wish to graduate in negative polarity into fourth density. Insofar as they come in through the windows of opportunity that are part of the just and appropriate quarantine of planet Earth, they fully intend to infringe upon free will and therefore do not have any ethical considerations to hamper them as they offer their own thoughts for humans of negative polarity who wish to become harvestable in that polarity. Yet we understand this is not the kind of contact about which you are asking. You asked about contact such as the one of Phyllis Schlemmer with the Nine and the one called Tom and that contact of Billy Meyer with those entities with whom he has spoken. To respond to that which you have asked, we take a step back and talk a bit about fourth density. For it is important in our answer that what little we have to say about fourth density, war be understood as background information. When entities graduate from third density to fourth density, various things occur, whether or not they have chosen positive or negative polarity fourth density. The move from third to fourth density creates a new environment. In the environment, there is no veil. There is no veil between the conscious and the subconscious mind of each person, and there's no veil between people, between the planet, and between the entities of other densities. Thusly, a fourth density soul is able to communicate with first density, second density, third density, fourth density, fifth, sixth, and seventh density. It is an open universe. The choices naturally are quickly made to shut out most of that which is available to know so that the evolving soul may continue with its lessons. Yet there is that full knowledge of the vibration of the one infinite creator in all vibrations available to that entity. However, the graduation to fourth density does not automatically create any improvement whatsoever in the evolutionary status of the soul. Just as a person who has graduated from third grade goes to school the first day for fourth grade, knowing nothing more than he knew at the end of third grade. 
So the beginning student of fourth density has only the harvest of third density knowledge, awareness, and insight as he approaches the lessons of fourth density. For a great portion of your last major cycle of 75,000 plus years, those who have graduated to fourth density have felt it necessary to defend their polarity from the opposite polarity as if they were still in third density. The entities involved in this war are of the inner planes rather than coming from outside the planet. Fourth density wanderers are not coming in to carry on this war. Rather, these are entities coming in which have succeeded and reached harvestability, have chosen not to go on to fourth density, but to remain in the inner planes of third density. Their awareness is that of fourth density, yet their prejudices remain those of third density. So they are convinced that they must defend the souls of planet Earth from negative polarity. Likewise, those who have graduated in the negative sense see it as their business to battle the light. They see themselves as those who could use the light for their own purposes, leeching the power of which the positive polarity is full and flipping it so that its power becomes negative. The situation of war, the so-called war in heaven, is a part of your inner plane's environment. Individual entities of both polarities eventually become mature enough spiritually to realize that strife is unnecessary. They finally become free of third density fear and are able to move on to their lessons leaving the war behind. However, there are always people that are new to fourth density who are willing to take up the cudgels of this heavenly war and do what they feel is the right thing to do in protecting the innocent, developing third density souls on planet Earth. It may be noted that in all of this strife there is nothing but the highest ideals and desires on the part of those of positive polarity and in their own way those of negative polarity. There is a good deal of confusion, but there is not the goal to spread confusion or to act in any way but a righteous or a good way. It is simply that in whatever density one is, one remains capable of error. We ourselves, as we have said, feel that we have occasionally made errors. Certainly the degree of information that we were able to share with some of those involved in your Manhattan Project, also in the work of the one known as Nicola, there was an unwise amount of information shared. The opportunity seemed to be to offer powerful resources that would alleviate the necessity of the people of planet Earth to work so very hard and to use up their incarnational time without being able to work on their metaphysical evolution. Yet these powerfully positive people were not able to control the results of their use of our information. Is it a concern of ours that this information we used to harm, where we had hoped only to help? Yes, it remains a concern. From each of our mistakes we have learned much, and because of our concern for those distortions that have occurred, we remain within your planetary atmosphere, as it were, ready to speak through such instruments as this one, in the hope of lessening distortion. When one speaks of such entities as the Nine, one speaks of a kind of entity that has an unusual relationship with some of those within the inner planes of this planet. The entities which make up the Nine are in fact those of the entity known to this instrument as Yahweh. This instrument was saying that she felt that this was the designation of that particular contact and we confirmed that information as being so. As you know, Yahweh has had a long relationship with those of planet Earth especially those which came into incarnation from the planetary influence of the sphere you know as Mars, in altering the genetic code for this large group of entities as they incarnated upon planet Earth. They placed bits of themselves, shall we say, to make a complex story simpler within the genetic changes that were made, and each of you carries to some extent some of these altered changes in your DNA. Consequently, this particular entity contains a host of energies, from the inner planes of your planet. There is a legitimate extraterrestrial aspect to this energy, but it is harmonized with inner planes thought forms, which are the templates of the genetic changes made 75,000 years ago when those of Mars came into the Earth's atmosphere. This means that these entities which together make up the Nine or Yahweh have never grown past the impulse or desire to interfere for the good, of course, in the story of planet Earth. There is a tremendous love of the people of Earth from this group, and a sincere and genuine desire to help. And yet because of the distortions that have persisted in their infringement upon the free will of all those whose genetic codes have been changed, 
There's a lack of awareness of the distortions inherent in physically presenting themselves before entities or making physical changes in an environment of which they are a part in order to convince entities that they are real. We deeply understand the desire of those of the Nine to make a difference on the planet Earth. We understand because we have experimented with coming among your people. The desire to make a mass landing and herald a new day, calling for love and light, with the strength of a massive display of superior insight, intellect, and knowledge. We do not agree that it is a gambit that will be effective in any way in lightening the consciousness of planet Earth. And we have many thousands of your years ago put away any thought of doing so. The promised landings, as the one known as Jim said earlier, shall not occur. Yet there is that energy within the psyches of the subconscious levels of mind of many upon planet Earth which desire this outcome. And so the desires of those upon planet Earth mingle with the desires of those of the Nine to create a self-fulfilling link in which the information continues to be offered because it is desired. And this is a point which is worthy of some examination. We find it helpful to work with instruments such as this one, who has no particular need to express its own thoughts, for we are able to channel through this instrument that which we wish to say, without this instrument adding or subtracting information according to its opinions. It is helpful to have instruments with whom to work with who have no biases as far as the outcome of their words. The more need there is on the part of the instrument to channel certain things, the more likely the instrument is to take that which we have to say and to create of our thoughts a little more than we had to say, shall we say. The biases of the channel are always a part of any channeling. The only question is to what extent the bias of the channel has influenced the material produced. A certain amount of material, which is part of the instrument's experience, is helpful. We often use stories from this instrument's life or thoughts that this instrument has considered to color our simple message with the various guises of storytelling and myth. For if we offered only the simple truth without any storytelling, then we would say over and over again, all is one. That one thing is unconditional love. Love is the creator. Love is the creator's house and love is the nature of all beings in that house. Indeed, we are grateful to have the personal coloration of the instrument to give more variety to our message. However, it is a delicate thing to collaborate with an earthly instrument and produce spiritually helpful material that has a minimum of bias. That is our goal. Needless to say, this is not the goal of all who have spoken with your people. The one known as Billy Meyer is anomalous in that this entity was dealing with unaffiliated entities of fourth density level. That is, they were not affiliated with the Confederation of Planets in the service of the Infinite Creator. They and the one known as Billy were able to offer some positively oriented and inspirational material thanks to the catalyst of the one known as Billy. At the same time, these entities were not entirely positive. That is to say, though of fourth density level, they had not come through the development into a planetary social memory complex, and consequently their actions were in many ways flawed according to that rule of non-infringement on free will that is so dear to our hearts. As you investigate and research non-normal contact between the inhabitants of your planet and extraterrestrial entities, you will find that there is a vast array of experiences that have been had by various peoples in the years of experiencing and keeping history and writing it down. Some extraterrestrial sources have made compacts with inner planes sources. Some extraterrestrial sources have become inner plane sources. There is a bewildering array of non-normal contact. Some of the information in many of these mixed polarity contacts is useful. Therefore, it is completely up to each seeker to discard information that is not helping that particular person in his judgment and to focus on those pieces of information that do seem to be helpful, again, strictly according to that entity's judgment. My friends, your judgment is adequate to the task of sifting through the variety of messages that you may read. You do have the capacity to follow your heart and to follow the path of resonance. May we ask if there's a follow-up to this query? I have a follow-up question, quote, is it correct to say that entities that are part of the Confederation observe the approach to contact with humans that your group has? We are those of Quo, and are aware of your query, my brother. On the whole, it is fair to say that is true. However, we ourselves have acted other than according to these dictates within your major cycle. Consequently, we cannot say that the Confederation's hands are completely clean either. 
However, we believe that we have learned for the most part from our mistakes, and we hope that we have found the optimal way to offer helpful information without significant distortion. Question? Yes, is the experience of Earth's having so much extraterrestrial contact towards the end of the cycle the fairly typical experience of planets going through this third density in this galaxy? We are those of Quo and believe we understand your query, my brother. It is so that as a planetary population becomes ready to be harvested, it calls for inspiration in such a way that those entities who are sympathetic to that call will come and visit. However, it is unusual for a planet so near to harvest to have visitations from both positive and negative sources. It is more common to see this pattern at the beginning of a major cycle. By the second minor cycle, there's usually the beginning of a planetary choice for the positive or negative polarity. With your planet, contrary-wise, the majority of those choosing at all upon your planet have indeed chosen the positive polarity. There is far more positive energy upon your planet than negative. However, there is enough negative polarity energy to create a dual call, both positive and negative. This has blurred and confused the situation since instead of having one concerted planetary surge towards the light or towards the darkness, there is this continuing dynamic betwixt the light and the darkness as entities approach graduation. Therefore, your planetary sphere is anomalous in having a dual visitation. And the anomaly is serious enough that this entire planet has been, as we have said before, quarantined for this major cycle in order to attempt to regulate the mix of contacts so that those of negative polarity are able to communicate with entities upon planet Earth only at certain randomized intervals. Question? I have one last question on a different subject. Before I say it, I feel that I want to say, at least from my limited viewpoint, that the work the Confederation is doing with its diligence and attention to free will is deeply inspiring, at least to me. And since I'm part of everyone else, it must be so for other people as well. The question actually is about the nature of the call. You've mentioned that you hear the call. I'm curious about what this call feels like. What is this call to your entity? We are those of Quo and are aware of your query, my brother. We would thank you for your comments upon our attempts to serve the population of planet Earth. It is, of course, music to our ears to feel that love that you have for us, and we thank you, my brother. Yet it is also worthy to note in this regard that it does not eliminate or questions and concerns as to what the line is between witnessing to our own truth and being persuaders. For we would not be persuaders. We do not wish to pull or push people or do anything except offer hopefully helpful information. At the same time, it is obvious from the nature of our information that we are biased towards the positive polarity that we do rejoice when entities awaken. The philosophical aspects of our work has never been entirely clear because as we said at the beginning, the only way that we can be of utterly positive polarity is to cease attempting in any way to influence the entities whom we love so dearly and are calling to us. Now to respond to your query on the nature of the call, when one of your human babies awakens in the night, and discovers that it is hungry, wet, and alone. It cries. It cries and calls out in the only way it knows for help. Blessedly, in almost every case, the parents come and minister to that child, feeding it, drying it, getting a new dry diaper on it, and cuddling it until it naturally goes back to sleep, content, knowing that it is loved and that all of its needs are met. Each of you is spiritually seeking an infant, and if you are crying in the night, you're crying for spiritual food. You're crying to be cleansed of the grime of confusion, sorrow, and suffering. And you are crying because you're alone and you do not feel loved. As entities move through the third density, they begin to become able to address their own needs as they awaken and become spiritual toddlers or spiritual preschoolers. They begin to choose to feed themselves heavenly food to cleanse themselves from spiritually degrading ideas and concepts and to win through to the knowledge that they are not alone. Because of the intense confusion among your peoples, throughout your third density experience, for the most part, entities have not matured beyond the crib. They cry out in the darkness, and our hearts go out to them. There is a great desire on our parts to reach out the hand and steady that baby, to feed that baby, 
to give that sweet infant soul a new start, a clean diaper, a belly full of love, and a good rock in the cradle. We hope that we have become more mature as those who offer help, as we have experimented with ways to answer that call. And we can certainly say that those of planet Earth have begun to become more mature, as it should be. Many are those who have moved from the cradle to preschool to grade school to middle school and finally are ready to graduate third density on time, mature at last, knowing that the food of love is the food for them, knowing that they wish to turn from anything that is not truly love and light, knowing that they are not alone, for as they love, so have they been loved a hundredfold, a thousandfold, overwhelmingly. The hard part for entities is the first waking up and this is effort to which we have come in response. Our love remains unblemished. How far we have fallen short of perfection in our dealings with your planetary population is unknown to us, but we are sure that there are many, many mistakes that we have made for which we humbly ask for your forgiveness. The energy wanes for this entity and this group, so we thank the instrument and leave it and the group in love and in light. We are known to you as those of Quo, Adonai, Adonai. Wow, I always love reading Quo, and in particular, I really loved both of these channeling segments. We learned a lot in that first channeling about Venus, something I've always been fascinated by. According to the raw material, Venus went smoothly through the third density into fourth density, and we are suffering by going through this density because the veil is not as transparent. And what that means is we're not aware of our past lives, of others, of our subconscious mind. And because of that in this environment, it's a lot more difficult. There's a lot more separation. And they had it easier on Venus. And so what Venus is saying, what they're saying, the members of Ra that went through that particular shift in their planet into the new Venus, is things were going great for several million years, but then they got into sixth density and they realized they didn't learn the lessons they needed to learn. And there are many that are moving back into third density after millions of years to learn these lessons. And that even though it's more difficult here, it is well worth it in the lessons that we're learning. Now, I have my own problems with this in my mind, and I certainly know that I don't know better but it feels to me like we're being manipulated and the environment we're in is simply impossible for a large majority of people to properly awaken and shift into a fourth density environment. The way the media manipulates the economic system in this country, it makes it so that people don't even have time to think about this stuff. They're working all the time. And I do believe there is a distortion on this planet which will unfairly limit people's progress towards an open heart that we need in order to graduate at the end of our next life cycle. The second channeling was fascinating. Here is one of the first times we get a discussion of Yahweh as a member of the inner planes. Now the inner planes is a mysterious thing that's talked about by Ra and Quo as this other place that people go after death that's the place that you go after death into the inner planes and Ra and these entities say that they exist within the inner planes of this planet. So perhaps every planet has its own inner planes or it's just another dimension. If it's related to the astral knot, there has never been a full clarification. But here we get an idea that Yahweh is also connected to the nine. I don't ever remember Yahweh being connected to the nine. Check out my episode on Yahweh where I discuss what they say in the Law of One, this entity that became belligerent was a different Yahweh than the original Yahweh and there was distortion with the Yahweh. It ended up being an angry sort of creator God that distorted our understandings of God. And I've discussed it in other episodes, but here we understand that the Yahweh presence is similar to an angelic entity that is a part of the nine. So if they're a part of the nine, they rule the solar system so it is God. Yahweh is this God. And, and they're saying that this Yahweh actually improved and changed and went to another level in their understanding. I don't know what to say, but I'm fascinated when they discuss it. There is an ongoing discussion that we get from Quo about their past 
and their attempts to help this planet and how these attempts can violate our free will and how there's a point where we do our best to help even when it appears there's a violation and they give their own justifications of why they communicate to us in this way. I do think that their teachings have made a difference and I do respect their desire not to persuade but only inform. But I believe all communication on some level has a level of persuasion to it no matter how hard you try. There's really no way to avoid it but they do an excellent job of trying to. We have an interesting discussion of the war that happens in heaven in the fourth density that's talked about repeatedly in these channelings and in the raw material. Those of fourth density are the ones that try to stop the negative polarity, the Orion group, whatever you want to call them. And they don't do that in fifth density. Eventually they move beyond this war, but there's definitely a conflict between the light and the darkness that exists in that fourth density. And we learn more about it. I'm fascinated by that. There has been some interesting channelings that have come through. If you look at the history of the channelings at LL Research, where entities that weren't Quo or anything else claim to be coming from the inner planes, having been in third density and in fourth density in the inner planes. I would love more clarification. For instance, when we read books like Life in the Unseen World, is that in the inner planes? I don't know. This is all food for thought. Thank you for listening so far. I'd love to know what you think or if this clarified anything from your understandings of this material. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. Be sure to go back and check out the playlist on Quo, the playlist on The Law of One, where I have talked about these issues, concepts, and ideas. I continue to learn, and if I find more relevant material that's not necessarily repetitive from stuff we've talked about before, I'll return to Quo soon. If you have any particular channelings that you've seen that you'd like me to explore, let me know and send them my way. You can find them at llresearch.org. Be sure to check out my art at www.newearth.art. And welcome to the Reality Revolution. Thank you.